Institute of Classical Studies. And though I'm very sad that we can't welcome our distinguished speakers in person to London, um, I'm absolutely delighted that they've agreed to give a lecture for us. And of course, I'm also delighted that so many people have joined us from all over the world, many more people than probably would have been able to join us if we'd been able to hold the lecture in London. Um, our two speakers, as John has said, are distinguished archaeologists who are going to present uh, recent results of um, their fieldwork to us. Dr. Anastasia Gadolu studied uh, at the University of Athens, uh, where she did her training in history and archaeology, although she also spent her time in the UK. She has um, a master's in landscape studies at Leicester. And since uh, 1993, she's been working at the Hellenic Ministry of Culture and Sports, uh, most recently as head of the Department of Prehistoric and Classical Archaeological Sites, Monuments and Archaeological Works, um, which gives her res leading responsibility for the protection and enhancement of archaeological monuments and sites all over Greece. So in addition to her extensive um, work in terms of surveys, archaeological excavations, um, museum exhibitions, she's published two um, books, one on Achaia in early historical era, ceramic production and burial customs, and one on Fapsos class pottery reconsidered workshop or pottery style. So again, we have this um, regional specialization um, in, her, in her monographs that we will also be hearing about. Um, and she is co-directing the systematic excavations at Elike together with our second speaker, um, Dr. Erofili Collier. Um, so Erofili Collier also um, did her studies in Athens, um, receiving her PhD on Hellenistic pottery from Naxos, which was also the subject of her 2006 monograph. Um, she has been working as an archaeologist at the Ministry of Culture um, and has had responsibility for preservation, excavation, study and heritage in various archaeological sites and regions in the north and western Peloponnese, um, including um, responsibility for um, such important UNESCO World Heritage Sites as uh, Basai and Olympia. Um, She's written numerous papers in addition to the monograph I mentioned, and of course is co-directing the excavations at Elike that we will be hearing about this evening, um, very recent discoveries and um, up-to-date research. Um, so in a moment, I will hand over to our speakers. Um, Dr. Collier will present first, followed by Dr. Gadolu. Um, I'd just like to say a word or two about um, procedure for the presentation and for the Q&A. Um, I'd ask everyone apart from our speakers to turn their videos off and keep themselves unmuted during the presentation just to preserve um, um, quality of connection. When it comes to the Q&A, please would you use the chat function in order to indicate that you would like to ask a question. Um, we have well over 100 attendees at this lecture now, um, and so I won't be able to see raised hands. I will then um, call upon you as you appear in the chat. And please, at that point, feel free to turn on your microphone and if you wish to, um, your picture in order to ask your question. If there's anyone who um, is in a situation where they cannot turn on their microphone and they would like to ask a question, please do feel free to type your question in the chat. But it would be nice to have um, some other voices in the room at that stage as well. So without further ado, I am going to hand over the floor to our first speak to speaker, Dr. Collier. Dear professors, dear colleagues and dear friends, good evening. It is a great honor for both of us to have been invited to give this web lecture tonight. We would like to thank the Institute of Classical Studies and the British School of Athens for giving <clears throat> us the opportunity to present the already published results of our research and discuss with you the results of our two recent excavation campaigns on site. No one could imagine the great significance the ancient remains revealed during the soil digging for a house in a private lot at Nicolaica would have for the, for the early history of Achaia and especially for the history of Eliki, one of its ancient, ancient cities. The Psytal Temple of the Geometric Period was uncovered in 2004 by the Archaeological Service. 
the site lies uh, at the Nicolaika village beside the old national road, west of the modern course of the Kyrinitis River. West of the Kyrinitis extends the territory of ancient Eliki, which was destroyed by the by the earthquake of 373 BC. Many ancient authors, down to, the, to, le, to late antiquity, refer to the biblical destruction of Eliki and its submergence beneath the waves of the sea, an event that rapidly took on mythical dimensions. Neighboring Aegean then took advantage of the opportunity and occupied the lands of Eliki, thus becoming the predominant city of Achaia. It also acted as a religious and political center of the first Achaian League, replacing Eliki. Eliki was never rebuilt. It remained part of the territory of Aegean until the Roman times. According to the available evidence, the Nicolaica sanctuary was a major shrine of Eliki, where cult was practiced uninterrupted from uh, the proto-geometric to the archaic period and all the phases of the initially open air shrine to a geometric period, tem period temple and later to an ar archaic temple are preserved. The temple was discovered during the works for the construction of a house in a plot in the center of the village. The research started as a rescue excavation and was continued in the subsequent years until 2011. Work in these uh, first campaigns focused on revealing the temple. To date, most of the upside building within the boundaries of uh, the Komnenos plot has been fully excavated, although its west part has not been investigated as it extends into the neighboring plot. The temple is upside measuring seven meters in wide. Quite remarkable is the particularly neat manner in which the arts East part of the south wall was constructed out of carefully worked stone blocks, as well as the regularity of its curve. In fact, it formed the southernmost part of the stylobate of a semicircular approach, similar to that of the Temple of Artemis at Anomazaraki, where support to the structure was provided by five freestanding stone bases. The thickness of the foundations indicates that the temple superstructure was of mud brick, although no clear traces of this have been found in the surface layer. The temple floor of reddish beaten earth was preserved in a fragmentary condition, while in the center it was markedly raised. It appears that the temple of Iliki embodies the major features present in the architecture of, of the end of the 8th century, with the exception of the semicircular porch which seems to be a characteristic of the Achaean temple architecture of this period. Close to the center of the later upside temple in 2006, exactly beneath its raised in that area floor, a congruential mud brick structure was uncovered. This is an altar of mud brick of mud brickwork constructed of six successive uh, courses of unfired mud bricks. The basic criterion for the identification of the structure as an altar is the composition of the grain color or traces of intense burning layer that was found in contact with it. Of particular importance is the stratigraphy around the altar. The gray layer with traces of incineration extends to its east and west, as well as to the north and south, where it is delimited by the temple walls. This layer includes distinct traces of burning, broken animal bones, numerous fieldstones, lumps of clay, and a multitude of objects, broken vases and shirts, mainly from uh, drinking vessels and cooking pots, horse figurines, parts of terracotta architectural models, uh, and uh, several metal objects. The most characteristic finds, however, are 60 terracotta wheels either disc-shaped or with the pierced eggs at the center of the, or with spokes. Below the gray layer, a yellow one of sandy earth with stones and markedly fewer finds was excavated. A skiffos with 30 thaps of decoration was found a short distance south of the altar placed between stones. In the lowest part of the yellow layer were numerous field stones, large and small. 
The earth between the stones contained extremely few sheds, mainly of cooking vessels and lumps of uh, burnt clay and few animal bones. In the center of the temple, at the de greater depth, was a layer of uh, river gravel without any finds. It can be deduced from stratigraphy and pottery that despite their somewhat different, te different texture, these successive layers below the temple floor down to the altar space level were deposited contemporaneously during the construction of the building in order to fill in the altar and raise the ground level. This is further corroborated by the fact that joining or associated shirts from numerous races as well as parts of the house uh, models were found dispersed into these different layers. A case in point is the roof of the terracotta house model with figure decoration published by Anastasia Gadolu, parts of which were found mainly in the gray layer as well as in the overlying and lower layers. The temple construction should be based on the basis of the, the latest search the late geometric pottery, even though all layers also contain earlier finds. In the gray and the yellow layer, middle geometric pottery constituted over 30% of the total of the decorated shirts, and all strata contained a few number of early geometric and proto-geometric shirts. The gray layer includes finds related to the rites performed at the altar. Consequently, the pottery it yielded indicates that the altar was in use throughout the second half of the 8th century until the construction of the temple at the end of the century. But the large percentage of middle geometric pottery strongly suggests that the altar was built in the first half of the 8th century. Since the, the finds in the grey stratum come from rituals, it is reasonable on the basis of the earliest pottery to date the inauguration of the cult as early as the protogeometric period. As a matter of fact, the presence of a predating the altar intensely heated clay layer resembling a floor with ashes on it, which proceeds southward beneath the altar, leads us to the assumption that in an earlier period, the mud brickwork construction would have been preceded by an older clay hearth, possibly related to the earlier in the pottery. Some conclusions can be drawn about the ritual performances by examining the composition of the gray layer. This does not consist exclusively of burnt remains, but also has a lot, quite a lot of soil, which explains the color variation from gray black to gray brown or dark brown. Consequently, it lacks the greasy texture and black color encountered in analogous layers in sanctuaries where the remnants of the sacrificial fire were deposited around the altar and leveled from time to time. We may assume that in Nicolaica the remains of each sacrifice and the associated meals have been cleared away from the area around the altar and dumped nearby, whereas in the late 8th century this deposit was used as filling over the entire site of the temple in an effort to preserve the altar and at the same time to raise the ground level for the erection of the recital building. Animal bones were found mainly in the grey layer, broken into tiny pieces. Some 80% are carbonized and calcified, while the rest are not burned. The majority of them bears intense surface erosion, which indicates that they remained exposed on the ground for many years after the rituals while some have butchery marks. The few diagnostic remains are mainly from domesticated animals, predominantly sheep, perhaps goat, and to a lesser extent, pig and few bovine, while two examples of deer have been identified. The study of the osteological material has revealed that during this period, sacrifices were made in which parts of the animals were charred completely for the honored deity. These sacrifices were followed by ritual meals in which uh, worshippers participated, as attested by bones, without traces of burning, from the cooked part of the animals. The burnt bones show a preponderance of long bones, indicating the, indicating the performance of regular sacrifices 
in which the thigh or thighs of the animal were bent completely on the altar. Furthermore, the results of the archaeobotanical search show that this grey earth contained also grapes, almonds, figs and barley seeds. The most impressive and valuable votive offering from the temple is a decorated roof model which features a chariolet race, the dedication of Christ triple to the deity and also a symbolic abduction of a maiden. Both the contexts, it was found dispersed to the east and southeast of the Madbrick altar and the nature of the iconography indicated that it was a ritual object of particular significance uh, perhaps express, expressing the social identity of the dedicant and at the same time honoring the god. Worth mentioning also are three fragments of the led geometric in Hoi, depicting a ritual dance procession, an interpretation given humanely to the way the male figures are depicted. The most characteristic finds, however, are the approximately 80 terracotta voids either forming part together with the horse figures of clay votive chariots or dedicated as individual votives. The horse was considered a heroic, religious and mythical symbol, uh, reflecting the power of the elite. The numerous terracotta chariot ruins, the horse figurines, the painted rep representation of the chariot race on the roof of the terracotta horse model, support the hypothesis that the worship god was Poseidon, a deity associated with horses and chariot races. The ancient cult of Poseidon Eliconius at is attested in the sources. Homer first mentions the worship of the god at Eliki, and Pausanias recounts that when the first inhabitants of the city, the Ionians, were expelled by the Athenians, they took their cult to their new homeland in Asia Minor. Moreover, several ancient authors explain the destruction of Eliki by the earthquake of 373 in terms of the wrath of Poseidon and the dis disrespect shown by the city's residents to the emissaries of the Ionian cities of Asia Minor, who were seeking the ancient statue of the god, or at least uh, an example of its type. Investigation beyond the geometric upsidal temple was limited to a number of trial trenches dug in an attempt to define the range of the antiquities at the site. An east-west trench was opened 20 meters to the north of the upsidal temple. In its west part stood a north-south wall built of small and medium-filled stones. Associated pottery finds suggest that this wall belongs to the building of the geometric period. At a slightly higher level and four meters to its east, a thick layer was excavated consisting of a multitude of archaic uh, broken roof tiles and a few parts of clay plaques with fragmentary relief figures, including a sphinx and fragments from a gorgon in the near lauf and pose. <coughs> Apart from the stylistic and structural similarities, the occurrence of uh, uh, holes of equal diameter in the lower part of two of these plaques, it, it demonstrates that the, the reliefs were nailed to a wooden background. On the basi basis of the above evidence, their attribution to a pediment seems quite plausible. It is clear that the finds in this extended layer did not come from the geometric temple, the roof of which would have consisted of rich, drawn clay. But these architectural members and roof tiles rather belong to a not yet located Doric temple. More details on these findings could be presented uh, subsequently by Anastasia Gadol. When the first period of the excavation ended in 2011, and after the study and the publication of almost all the data available up to then, we were able to maintain and to through various uh, publications that a very important and ancient sanctuary of Eliki had come to light. We, we always knew that uh, we had to return at the site and continue our research, which we did at last in 2019. The excavation of the site started again as a systematic excavation and the results of the first campaigns were very encouraging, encouraging 
and uh, Anastasia Gadolu is going to present in a few. Good evening. Um, could you please give me uh, one or two minutes in order to start sharing um, my PPT? Of course, please go ahead and share. <clears throat> Dear professors, dear colleagues, dear friends, we're really very glad being here with you tonight. And it was in 2019 that the private land where the 8th century upsidal temple and the mud brick altar had come to light was, that was finally perhaped by the Greek Ministry of Culture, and it was then that we decided, with Erofili, to return to the site and start a systematic excavation under the auspices of the Directorate of Prehistoric and Classical Antiquities and the direction of the two of us. Works resumed at the place of the trenches, which were carried out to the north of the temple, where the layer with the tiles and archive terracotta architectural members, as well as a wall oriented north north south, was uncovered in 2018. Uh, you have already seen this slide with the concentration of the roof tiles, and among the fragments of the roof tiles, a number of terracotta reliefs discovered that have derived as aerophily already. Uh, presented to you from the pedimental decoration of an archaic Doric temple, which included a central gorgon flanked by two heraldic sphinx. The temple itself has not yet been found, but it is probably located a short distance from the spot where the roof tiles and architectural members were deposited. It is likely that the roof tiles were laid uh, circa 550 BC or slightly earlier. The mixture of late Dedalic and early archaic elements in the figure of the Sphinx, as Zerophili Kola has written in the publication of these terracotta reliefs um, in Hesperia, can be attributed to the artist's intention to add a mythical aura to the figure. In addition to confirming the location of an archaic temple in this area, the assemblage provides the first evidence for the existence of a local terracotta workshop in Ikea. Despite its provincial and conservative character, it possessed the means and craftsmanship to produce works of considerable merit. During the 2019 campaign, 100 fragments of tiles and of the seam of the old excavation were studied, and over 30 of them, the better preserved, were studied further. These consist mostly of pan tiles and cover tiles of the Corinthian type, the palmet and of its weeds reflects a simplified variation of a decorative, decorative composition seen on Corinthian and fixes dating to 560-540 BC. On the basis of the data available, it would be safe to conclude that they are connected to a temple of about, of about 560, conclusion to which Erophilic Olia had already reached after the initial study of the architectural sculpture and decorated terracotta uh, reliefs. The archaic temple would have a total width around 9 to 10 meters, um, and the tibanum in the center of the pediment would have been 90 centimeters to 1 meter in height. During the three recent excavation campaigns from 2019 to, th to 2021, it became clear that this tiles layer extends to the south and west beyond the already excavated area, so it seems that it covers to a much larger surface than the 20 square meter investigated in past years. Works carried out inside square 3A tone in order to investigate the layer of tiles that came to light following the surface layers in the bulk uh, 3A and 3A tone brought to light more fragments of roof tiles, including a calipiri gemon with a central anthem and spirals on either side. Following the soil removal inside squares 5A and 5B, a destruction layer of stones was revealed at the west. This layer contained mostly filled stones, but also fragments from the roofing, probably, of the archaic temple, including part of a calipir igemon 
a part of the palmetto roof tile a small, and a small quantity of pottery. The texture of the layer consisting mainly of stones and to a lesser degree of tiles, its oblong shape along with its location are elements that lead us to the hypothesis that this layer perhaps could be the remains of a destroyed wall. If this assumption holds true, the remnants of the building that is the archaic temple to which the wall belonged should extend further to the west of the excavation area, probably to the adjacent land plot. Among the recent finds, a small fragment of the head of a terracotta relief figure stands out. It preserves a small section of three locks of a block bridge covered with faded brownish paint. The rendering of the hairstyle is similar to that of the Sphinx from the old excavation, which is attributed to the pediment of the archaic temp. Nevertheless, it does not come from this figure since the Sphinx locks consist solely of one or two beaded locks. It is almost certain that it originates from another figure of the pediment not yet found. 50 to 80 centimeters below the tiles and the architectural members layer, an aerial chronological phase is being excavated, clearly associated more to the mud brick altar, which is around the mid of the 8th century, and less to the upsidal temple, which I remind you it was erected uh, towards the end of the 8th century. But almost certainly, it may belong to the wall uh, 5. It's here. No, I, can, I cannot show you with my cursor. Never mind. It's this wall oriented north to south in the new excavation grid. This phase has so far been investigated in four excavation squares, comprising an area measuring 36 square meters in total. A brown gray layer with traces of fire was discovered in the square 2A. The concentration of soil of this particular composition mainly covered the center of the square, as well as its eastern and southeastern parts. Small river cobbles were discovered at the southeastern part of the trench. During the removal of the soil, many shirts mainly belonging to fine ware pottery, traces of bones, calcar, dense clay masses, and a few small fragments of bronze seeds were discovered. An iron tube, a bronze fibula with a spiral head, a bronze ring and an iron spearhead were among the most outstanding finds. The spearhead was found at the northeast of the pit at an almost vertical position. And another uh, spearhead had also, has also come to light. Among the characteristic finds was a round terracotta knob with impressed decoration, probably from a pixie's lid dated in the second half of the eighth century. <clears throat> The same stratum continues in square 3A tone. A dense concentration of votives, almost 65, consisting of bronzes, iron nails, bronze and glass beads, animal bones, pottery and horse figurines, came to light during the 2021 campaign. The outstanding find of this stratum was a scarab curved from white steatite pierced length, lengthways for suspension. A seated figure to the left is clearly identified, probably a god or a high direct person. The symbols inscribed are Ra, Sun Disc, MN, Neb, and the combination of the above symbols mean the Lord. The scarab from the sanctuary at Nicolaica, an outstanding item of prestige, justifies the position of its owner in the high rank of the community. From the data preserved above, the ritual function of the stratum in squares 2A and 3A tone is more than obvious. An archaeological stratum, though, the total area of which has not yet been identified. Is this stratum connected with the altar of the upcycle temple? Uh, we would like to note here that the altar of the Apsaital Temple uh, was probably situated east of its longitudinal axis as a conspicuous layer of burning with late geometric search, stone chippings, and a bronze pin, which was revealed during a trial trench opened in 2008, 20, uh, 12 meters uh, from the temple has shown. 
The dark brown gray layer with traces of fire, animal bones, bronzes, and archaeobotanical remains presented above has been identified almost 20 meters to the north of the temple and quite lower than it. If this layer is connected with the altar per se, or forms its remnant swept away during periods of cleaning, or is somehow connected with the building, with the building part of which is wall five, excavated further to the west, but probably at the same layer, is one of our desiderata for future excavation campaigns. Even though the study of the animal bones of this stratum <clears throat> by George Kazadzis this summer revealed that they were not covered immediately or soon after its disposal by soil, thus suffering a prolonged exposure to atmospheric conditions and probably represent waste material that was disposed of in the area around the table, further, in our opinion, justifies the identification of this layer discussed above as the remnants of the altar of the Apsital Temple. Ritual seems also to be the character of the data coming to light in squares 4a and b, where a wall named wall 5 of small and medium and worked stones, probably the foundation of a geometric edifice, has, had been revealed during a trial trends in 2008. You are uh, viewing the old uh, photograph when this wall was first uh, um, found. East of it and into a layer of fallen stones, a late eighth dragon fibula, fibula was retrieved. This particular fibula type was widespread in North Italy, uh, mainly in late eighth, seventh, and sixth century, and its discovery hides at the area's relations with the Italian peninsula. During the two weeks campaign of 2019, the wall was once more rebuilt and cleaned. A layer of unfired clay bricks with remains of red stucco came to light, northeast of it, probably from the walls of a yet unidentified edifice. Some of it have been collected in order to be analyzed by a team of civil engineers and chemical engineers of the Technical University of Athens. If these are the remnants of a building, the walls of which were made of mud bricks and stucco, is something also that still has to be justified. In 2020 and 2021, investigations focused along the north part of the score 4B and east of wall 5. The soil removed was of a light color, loamy and fine grained, with bronze impurities and the concentration of river copies. A number of fragments stand out among the pottery finds. Fallen stones were removed east of wall 5, together with light colored soil, the darkness further down fine grained and sandy mixed with scattered gravel and river pebbles. A middle geometric layer was revealed, containing an important quantity of fine and coarse pottery, both burned and unburned. Among these finds were an intact cankaros, an almost intact inocoe, two bronze beads, part of the neck of a protothapsus inocoe, as well as three terracotta miniature wheels, Fragments of red mortar, fragments of bones and horns, three bronze seats, five bronze rings, three iron nails, and a gold seat. The works inside square 4A were also resumed during the 2020 and 2021 campaigns. The trench was investigated towards the south in order to rebuild the continuation of wall five. The soil in the area was again brown, friable, mixed with stones and gravel, and bore traces of fires. A considerable quantity of pottery was collected from the area, including fragments of, of a protothapsos amphoriscos, an intact black glazed cancaros, fragments of two more cancaroi. Uh, all of these found together with fragments of open vases, skifoi, and cancaroi very few fragments of red mortar, calcoir traces of bones, teeth, and cells, as well as bronze finds, including wires and seats, and an iron spearhead. We just yesterday received the, um, uh, the, this photograph of the vases which were found in the area I just uh, showed to you 
who it's unfortunately due to COVID situation, their conservation took uh, longer than um, usually. As you can see, uh, all of these come and uh, uh, are part of uh, uh, touring and drinking vessels. Uh, that's why we have concluded that in this area we've been excavating um, the debris of uh, preparation of food and dining. During the 2021 campaign, <clears throat> an in situ pira was excavated, justifying further the use of the area for cooking and dining purposes. The fire pit was comprised of two cooking pots and animal bones, partly carbonized. A micro excavation was carried out following the instructions for preserving everything intact for further work in the lab. The excavation in square 48 revealed that the wall 5, as it has been named, continues further to the south towards the 8th century upsidal temple, even though we still lack its end as it is clear that continues further south under unexcavated areas. Among the pottery finds, quite interesting to note is that a great quantity of search of protogeometric date. I just uh, show you here an example. As you can understand, these are very recent finds. This is a photo that was taken during uh, excavation, but uh, you can uh, see clearly that uh, the canferos, probably, for, for, uh, of which this, uh, search, uh, to which this search belong to, has all the characteristic motives of uh, protogeometric uh, wear. This, uh, well, this was one of uh, the bases, and uh, many other search also of protogeometric date came to light, concentrated mainly and up to now in square 4, 8 on, securing the early start of the cult in the site, a fact to which we had reached after the discovery of a protogeometric cantaros in a trial trench east of the upcycle pen. As our basic aim is to collect any possible data from the field, and as is well known that archaeological stratigraphy often includes micro episodes in the form of fine layers, which are not visible with the necktie, but they can be traced and interpreted under the microscope, a number of samples were extracted from the stratigraphic sequence of five excavation squares and are going to be processed in the laboratory to produce thin sections of 30 micron thickness which will be studied further under the polarizing microscope in several magnifications. This work has been taken over by our collaborator and colleague, and colleague Dr. Nusin Guma. The micromorphological analysis at Nicolaika aims to reconstruct these anthropogenic and natural episodes which have affected the formation of the site. For, it, for instance, we would like to test the hypothesis that the site was subject to flooding episodes and examine to what extent these events have influenced the preservation of archaeological deposits. As a result, we aim to differentiate in situ contexts from secondary depositions when these are not scanned macroscopically. Moreover, we intend to trace and, and analyze the construction materials of the buildings which are erodible, for example, uh, calcareous and clayery mortals, plasters, etc. Of course, non archaeological investigation, as our, um, of course, an, archaeo an archaeobotanological investigation is also in project. Specimens from the soil from the entire excavation squares were collected separately in order to be sieved and flotated. The microscopic analysis of the samples after flotation was carried out by Kiryaki Tsirtsi and supervised by Professor F. Margaritis. Up to now, 10 out of 45 samples have been studied under a stereo microscope and fragmented olive stones, grape pips, parts of organic matter and wild taxa are present in the samples. The organic matter possibly represents the pulp of fruits or processed cereals that such as fuel or brand. I would like just to inform you that uh, uh, the 45 samples 
items uh, were from last year's excavation. And this year we have uh, collected 80 samples and we have, um, and we have uh, left more than 10 uh, bags to be um, flotated next year. As far as animal bones from the recent excavation is, con is concerned, the study is taken uh, by our colleague and collaborator, Dr. George Gazanzis. In total, 168 fragments of bones and teeth were recorded using a diagnostic zones approach. This was decided in order to cope with the extreme fragmentation of the material. Out of 168 recorded bone and tooth fragments, 113 derived from the excavation that took place during between 2019-2021, whereas 55 derived from the flotation material from contexts associated with the temple excavated between 2010-2011. Out of 168 recorded bones and teeth, 151 were used for quantification. The level of taxonomic variability is extremely small. Overall, five species have been positively identified, and these seas are cattle, sheep, goat, pig, and dog. The results um, are the same uh, with the results uh, to which uh, uh, Dr. Um, Eleni Psafi uh, had reached when she studied uh, the bone material that had been derived from the, excav from the old excavation uh, and mainly from the mud brick altar and the upsidal temple. <clears throat> A sample of uh, photos of how the, the animal bones from the excavation are preserved. Of course, these are only preliminary remarks, as you can understand. Uh, the study has not begun yet, as the excavation is uh, going on, even though we have decided with Aerophily uh, to stop excavating and have a study season next year. <clears throat> As it is obvious, the layer we were discussing, technically divided in more than one up to now excavation squares, is the, st is the same, of course, stratum, is dated in the beginning of the second half of the 8th century, probably is connected with wall 5. Its function is purely ritual and could be identified as the debris of ritual dining. It also certainly represents a phase in the sanctuary's life prior to the erection of the upside tent, which was probably coexisted with the mud brick altar. Many questions have to be answered. Is this layer being excavated? Is the layer being excavated in squares 5A and, uh, five and 4A and 4B connected to the ritual layer that has been revealed in squares 2A and 3A tone for which we talked in the beginning of uh, the second part of the presentation? Is this deposit a cult deposit, a ritual deposit or a waste deposit? How wall five is connected with this deposit? Is wall five part of a safe, secular or secular building? Any answer to the question just placed is subject to future new findings as the excavation at the site is an ongoing project. Nevertheless, this brief presentation of the past and recent data from this unique sanctuary site makes clear that the sanctuary under discussion in IKEA was established and organized according to the common religious code which existed during the early historical era in the Hellenic sanctuaries of Olympia and Delphi. You can see the close proximity of the Gulf of Itea the red uh, site is uh, the site of the uh, Nicolaica sanctuary site. And you can see the close proximity with the Gulf of Itea and of course of the Panhellenic sanctuary of Delphi. And uh, the inhabitants of the area of Nicolaica could easily also reach following the road by the sea to the sanctuary of, of uh, ancient Olympia. 
the religious practices that took place in the sanctuary at Nicolaika and of the types of offerings made there can reveal the donor's personal status and shed light on the process towards various forms of social development. The study and publication of the unique votive offering of the architectural clay model with figure decoration by the present speaker that has been revealed from the layer under the upside alternative has driven us to certain conclusions, some of which I will try to summarize here. The architectural roof model from Nicolaika is certainly an excellent uh, votive object reflects the existence of an aristocracy with which showed by the dedication of this very object, both to honor the deity worshipped in the sanctuary and to declare its own prominence and authority. Its representations define the identity of the object and thus the identity of the sanctuary. The combination of the Nicolaika model of a chariot race, chariot riders, the presentation of a tripod, which carries two levels of interpretation, both as a prize in the games and as a votive offering to the god, and finally, the symbolic abduction of the elite maiden, all create an image of the aristocratic elite as the guardian of the political, social, religious, and economic character of the community. The narrative scenes depicted on the model, well within the sphere of cult iconography, express aristocratic values and possibly critical stages of a heroic male life through its involvement in certain acts which stand as signs of masculine domination. The offering of the uh, sanctuary of Nicolaika Eliconios, of Poseidon Eliconios at Nicolaika and Nagia, reflects the ritual activities that took place. The chariot races and the offering of the prize to the deity, and suggests that in the 8th century BC, there was an elite class with the means to organize such races in honor of a deity and to provide an expensive prize such as a tribal, a gift exchanged among heroes in Homer and symbol of power for the local rulers. The architectural roof model with its narrative scenes reflects the increasing concerns of certain social and mainly family groups in the second half of the 8th century to express their identities through the oikos in both its physical and symbolic forms. Furthermore, through the figural decoration of the model, a consistent emphasis on forming personal identity is evident. It combines, I mean the model, symbolically the building space, the oikos, the symbolic meaning of which has been further explored in past papers and the ritual space expressed by the narrative scenes depicted on it the chariots, the chariot races, presentation of the tripod prize, and of course, the symbolic uh, abduction of the elite maiden. Additionally, the horse figurines and the clay wheels from clay model chariots among the votive offerings from the Nicolaika sanctuary, 80 almost uh, votive wheels have come to light from past excavations. And since uh, 2019, when we restarted the excavation at Nicolaika, we have almost uh, 20 pieces. Uh, additionally, well, the horse figurines and the clay wheels uh, among the votive offerings uh, must therefore hold particular significance for both for the deity worship and for the society to which the sanctuary belonged. In every way, these votives reflect the high value assigned to the horse as a satu symbol. As uh, Fox has written back in 2008, horses and many others, of course, but uh, I decided to quit uh, Fox's um, words. Horses were the beloved status symbol of the age, painted on big Greek pottery vessels of geometric style, modeled on rounded pottery boxes for libations to the dead, incised on bronze belts and cast, above all in bronze as attachments to big cauldrons, and as figurines to be, to be dedicated in sanctuaries, the most commonly found votive object of this era, which are evidence to the social class and tastes of those who offered them. And uh, Krillard in 2015 reminds us that horses and chariots, among others, of course, uh, that horses and chariots were part of a common elite culture that embraced North Syria, Phoenicia, Cyprus, Assyria, Urartu, probably Egypt and certainly Greece. 
The existence of an elite class was further justified due to the recent excavation campaign by the reveal of the scarab, a prestige item not unknown in the area during the 8th century, as an inhumation in Epithos from Aegean was furnished by a graver Thessalian in Ocoe, four Beocian figure, a bronze hair ornament, amber faience and glass beads, as well as two scarabs. So the scarab, the horses, the votive wheels, and the iconography of the architectural model, as well as the debris of the ritual mills, provides us with all the data needed, an important sanctuary site to be identified in the village of Nicolaica in North Arachia. The cult of Poseidon Eliconius was further, was well established in the protogeometric period, and the phases of this sanctuary site are coming to light during our excavation, waiting to be studied and interpreted. The votive so far express the internal dynamics of a society and the pattern of behavior of a certain class, that of the elite families of the 8th century in a cultic environment that reflected the modifications in the socio-political record and the transfer of religious power from the oikos of the family, both in its physical and symbolic form, to the oikos of the god, the temple, the most prestigious and lasting monument in the woods, the available surplus of society is transformed, a monument of common identity. And we will thank you with a photo of our team and our sponsors. Thank you very much for this honor and for uh, attending us. Our two speakers for, the, for an excellent uh, presentation, demonstrating not only in great detail their presentation, but also the care and attentive uh, work that they're doing uh, across that site. And it was particularly uh, pleasing to me to see how integrated uh, zooarchaeology, archaeobotany, and now microstratigraphy are uh, into that, which will obviously will help to enrich the, the answers that you're able to uh, give to some of the questions that you posed for us. But particularly important to be able to see stuff that was only excavated uh, a couple of months ago. So thank you both very, very much for your presentation. Thank you, Catherine, for hosting us. And everyone, I wish you all the very best. Uh, have a good evening.